Good evening. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to Ila Live. My name is Farah Hospital. I'd like to thank you, the few, for staying with us. And I'd also like to thank my colleague, Lukman Shadrach, for taking you through that first part of the show. Now, gun related domestic violence has come under the spotlight. This was yesterday at the launch of the Removing the Trigger campaign, which happened in Cape Town. Civil society organizations, including Gun Free South Africa, says the campaign aims to create awareness of the existing provisions in the current legislation to strengthen the rights of victims. Now, gun and gender-based violence remains a scourge in South Africa, and the country has an unenviable status of being among the five countries with the highest rates of femicide in the world. Joining us now to discuss this, I'd like to welcome from Gun Free South Africa, Adele Kirsten. Adele, good day. Thank you so much for joining us here on uh, Hilal Live. Uh Good day, Faraz, and hello to all your viewers as well. No, thank you so much for joining us. Adele, let's talk about, obviously, yesterday's campaign. Uh, I guess that when we look at the femicide rate in South Africa, it really is as sky high as one could get. Uh, how important was a campaign like yesterday in order to really bring the necessary awareness that it needs? So, as you know, I mean... People know that we have high rates of gender-based violence. I think one of the aims of the campaign is really to bring the role of guns in mm. domestic violence uh, into the spotlight. We know that guns play an important role in domestic violence relationships. So we have the data for the number of women who are killed by their male intimate partner with a gun. Uh, and of the almost 4,000 femicides posted in the 2022-2023 uh, crime stats, it was almost a third of those were gun-related. What we don't know is the extent to which guns are used uh, to coerce women, uh, to threaten them, to intimidate them. That's the kind of information that doesn't come through your mortuary data. Uh, often women don't talk about it. And it's only really when they go to seeking a protection order or approach the police to remove the gun that that information emerges. But we don't know enough about the nature and the extent of gun violence uh, in domestic violence relationships. And that's one of the aims, one of the three aims of the campaign is really to explore that and to use some of the big data sets, but also uh, to be talking to women in shelters. And that's one of the reasons we've partnered with the National Shelter Movement. Adele, the, those stats, obviously, from the, the final quarter of 2023 really paints a, a grim picture. And you've mentioned, of course, that a third of it was gun-related uh, gun violence. Um, uh, the role of society is going to be quite huge, isn't it? And one would feel that a campaign like which was launched yesterday really allows for there to be that necessary dialogue, isn't it? To, 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 to raise these questions and, of course, from that, find solutions on how this can be solved and, of course, how the, the sky-high rates of femicide can really be brought down. We, ultimately, it's not going to be a total elimination of it, but at least somehow trying to bring down these stats which are quite alarming. That's definitely uh, one of the aims mm. uh, of the campaign is to say that the existing laws, the Firearms Control Act and the Domestic Violence Act, have provisions in them uh, that give the authorities uh, not just uh, permission, but uh, for example, in a, in a domestic violence protection order, uh, if the court orders that the gun is removed, the police are obligated to do so. So there are a lot of uh, responsibilities on state agencies like the police and the courts uh, in ensuring uh, that women's rights to safety are strengthened. One of the things we know is that there is sometimes a lack of compliance with that order, but we know that there's also often a lack of understanding and knowledge about what exactly uh, the authority is. So the awareness raising component uh, of, of the campaign uh, is to work with what we call the implementing stakeholders, is to really work and collaborate with police and with magistrates 
in terms of their roles and responsibilities. But in addition to that, raising awareness, doing community rights awareness, so that women understand that these laws are aimed uh, at protecting them from gun-related uh, domestic violence, and that there are mm -hmm. things that they can do uh, to have a gun removed. So it's 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 across a, a, a fairly broad uh, spectrum, and including then the general public, because you may be a neighbour mm. uh, to someone who you know is experiencing domestic violence, uh, is in a relationship, and there's a gun in the house. You can also uh, you could encourage her and support her to come forward, uh, but you could also uh, lay a complaint. So there are a number of ways. Uh, in which the law can be used. And it's this, I, I guess it's this understanding of when you know the law, you can use the law and it can save a life. I think uh, you made that that point earlier. It's, it's really about uh, reducing the risk for women mm. uh, in domestic violence uh, relationships and getting the gun removed because we know when you remove the gun, you significantly reduce the risk for death and injury. Adele, I want to take your mind back 11 years ago, uh, obviously yesterday, 14th of February, the murder of Riva Steenkamp by Oscar Pistorius. And obviously that was, you know, really one way it brought into frame, you know, gun-related violence and femicide together. How much was what happened on 14th February 2013 really uh, the biggest of... Uh, are all eye openers in terms of the usage of weapons and it being linked to femicide. And of course, ultimately, it did see the tragic death of Rivas Dienkamp. I think it was uh, such a significant event, and we know that it played out globally mm. and in the country uh, for years. And I guess the reason it caught the public's attention was because these were two well-known people, these were celebrities, and in a sense that, which isn't true and isn't accurate, but somehow the sense of this does not happen to people like this. And we know, of course, uh, that, the, that the data tells another story. You know, domestic violence cuts across race and class, uh, and it happens in lots of homes, uh, and often guns are present. I think the other thing as well is that we, when, when we think about gun violence, we think about the stranger, we think about the intruder, uh, and we know that that's then often with an illegal gun. But this is a legal gun in the privacy and the safety of one's home. Um, and I think since that uh, murder of, of, of Riva in 2013, over this 11 years, I think we still don't fully grasp uh, the extent of this uh, because it's in the private domain. It feels like, is this really a crime? Mm. Uh, and you will see this with cops. Uh, cops will often, their first uh, sort of almost instinctive response is to suggest that the woman go for counselling, mm. you know, try and sort out your relationship. Uh, and that is an inappropriate response, particularly uh, when... Uh, she's asking for help. She's saying she's feeling threatened. She's fearful. Uh, and, 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 and in fact, the, the murder of Riva Stenkamp is, in fact, what galvanized us to begin to explore uh, this kind of toxic relationship between men and their relationship to guns mm -hmm. um, that we know that domestic violence is because of uh, power and control by men over women. Uh, it's it's a central feature uh, of of domestic violence. You add a gun into the mix, which is kind of an extension uh, of that uh, male power, uh, and the end result uh, is death uh, and destruction and extraordinary loss for for two families. Um, and I think what we what we then explored is this is meant to be this day of love and companionship or friendship. Um, and 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 yet that early morning, as the messages started mm. coming through, it turns that idea down. Um, it kind of 
it interrupts the idea mm. uh, in a very dramatic way. Uh, and I think it was one of the issues we raised yesterday. We should not be talking about violence and guns mm. on this day. But this is people's and this is women's everyday lived reality. And so we do need to be talking about it and we need to be talking about it uh, every day. Adele, let's look at the gun legislation laws. And obviously it is important because there are many that, of course, keep guns, keep weapons as a mean, means of, of, of self-defense, given that we've got a police force who are not really equipped to handle all sorts of crime within the country. Some would say that they are potentially out of their depth in trying to you know, protect victims of crime. But then how do you balance that of you know, keeping a gun as a means of self-defense to that of those who misuse and misabuse guns and have no real way of controlling it? I mean, talk to us about that and, of course, how Gun Free South Africa is trying to assist in, in, in finding a balancing act between the two, given the very fragile society we live in in South Africa. That's such an important uh, issue that you're mm. raising. Um, and I guess it's, it's a reminder that gun violence is a really complex phenomenon. Mm. And so on the one hand, we have to acknowledge that we live with high levels of fear. Most of us mm. either have been a direct victim of crime or know someone who's been a victim of crime. So this is very real. At the same time, we have to look at what the data tells us. Uh, and this is very important for an organization like Gun Free South Africa, uh, where we have to be evidence-led. What does the data tell us about the nature and extent of gun violence? What kinds of guns are causing the problem? Where, uh, you know, who's been killed? What guns are being used? Uh, and in what locations? And... The evidence here and in South Africa is, is really very clear. It's actually quite overwhelming, is that guns in the home put everyone at risk. And this is not just uh, for women being shot and killed by their male partner. It's risk of, of a small child getting the gun and accidentally discharging it, of someone who's suicidal in the home uh, using the gun to kill themselves. Uh, so it's accidents, it's, you know, it's suicide, uh, and it's domestic violence. And then, of course, there's the, the real risk of theft, you know, given the high levels mm. of, of home invasions. And that gun then just enters into uh, the illegal market. There's good South African research that shows that the presence of a gun uh, increases the risk for violence uh, in a home invasion, uh, and that a gun is often quite sought after by criminals. The evidence also for, for criminologists will tell you that most crimes are planned and most house invasions, there are four to five people. So you are outnumbered. You must likely uh, have, they would have superior firepower. Uh, and the aim is to actually, if you do have a gun, is certainly to get it off you. So the chance of you successfully using the gun to uh, defend yourself and your family, uh, is this, there's no evidence that it's successful. Um, so we have to look at, at, at that at the same time. We understand that, that the power of a gun, uh, both in its symbolic value, but also because it is a lethal uh, weapon as an effective in killing, um, is, is one of the reasons why people have this sort of instinctive or knee-jerk response is that mm. if I'm feeling scared, I have to get a gun. Yeah, sure. But we have to separate out what, what we feel will make us safe uh, with what the evidence tells us can make us safe. And, and that's sometimes a difficult distinction to make, but one of our jobs uh, as an organization committed to uh, reducing gun violence is to constantly have that conversation uh, and say to anyone who is thinking of getting a gun, consider the risks and the risks outweigh uh, the effectiveness of guns for self-defense.
Adele, thank you so much for joining us here on Hilal Live. Much appreciated. Okay, thanks, Sasha. That's, uh, for, uh, that's Adele Kirsten. Uh, she is part of Gun Free South Africa. Well, that's all we have for you here from the interview parts. Up next, it's your news on Hilal TV. Do stay tuned.